Well, we can use the regular image element to place images on our, you know, like we usually do. Uh, the picture element opens up the world of art direction for when we're placing images on it. So we can actually bring in a different image for when you're on a phone, a tablet, or uh, your desktop computer. So when it's, uh, you know, you can go from portrait to landscape um, and do all sorts of sort of fun stuff like that. So here's a, a fun example from Google. Uh, where you can see it's actually changing the image that's being loaded in based on the screen size. Now it's not doing this with media queries where it's hiding one image and showing the other one which can kill bandwidth because it would have to load in all three images and just show you one at a time. Using the picture element we're actually loading in one image depending on the screen size. So this is all done in the markup, it's not being done at all with CSS and it's loading only in the image that it needs to. And this is just a fun example of, you know, the Google threw together to show what it can do, but there's a lot of practical examples for this as well. Hi there, my name is Kevin and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Um, this is part of an ongoing series where I'm looking at images on the web. So we've already looked at uh, the source set attribute as well as the JPEG, PNG, and WebP and what WebP actually is uh, in my two previous videos. If you haven't looked at those or watched them, I'd suggest checking it out, especially the source set one. Uh, so a card's going to pop up on the top for that one now if you haven't seen it because I'm going to be using source set and I'm assuming you already know how source set works in this one because with what well, we explore the picture element, source set is a big part of that. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, we're, we're exploring the picture element, which is the element that allows us to do art direction. On a, on a large screen, I need a nice landscape picture. When I'm shrinking that down, it's gonna change into a vertical picture, maybe on the side. And then as that gets too small for two columns, it's gonna switch over to a nice uh, little vertical picture, a horizontal picture, or something that squeezes in, in the corner. So you can have a lot of control over that. Now, it's not something you might want to use all the time, but it's a really powerful and cool element that's all done with markup, so there's no CSS really involved. Uh, we'll be dabbling in it a little bit. Um, and yeah, let's go and check it out. So here I have a really simple design for large screen, medium screen, and small screen. It's sort of like a tablet and then our phone screen over here. Um, and the main thing that's important with this is as we're jumping between the different sizes, you can see the image is changing. Here I have the cat centered, uh, but I can see the entire cat. Then the cat is off to the side. And then in this one, he's centered again, but it is cropped a little bit tighter. So we're cropping off his ears a little bit and the tie over there. Uh, so I've exported all of these images. Um, so it's three separate images and I have also gone uh, to the length of getting them at different resolutions as well. So we have them uh, the 1x, 2x and 3x. Um, and if you want to follow along with me, I have all the starting files uh, ready to go right here and um, that you can get. So there is a link to that in the description below. And there's also the finished version files. Uh, there's a link to that in the description as well. So if you want to follow along, you can with the beginning files. Or if you'd rather just uh, check out the finished files, they're both there for you to look at. Um, so right now here is just my image and um, I have the large, I have the medium version as a medium and I have the small as small. So the three different screen sizes or the three different versions that we might want to use. Um, and right now I have them just here in my regular image tag like you might get. But of course we want to be using the picture tag and looking at how the picture tag works. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up a uh, picture here, picture, and we're going to close that right over here. Um, so the picture tag works, um, actually you need the, the picture tag by itself doesn't do very much. Um, if you're used to video or audio, it's a little bit like that, but inside of the picture tag, we do also have to have our image tag that we're used to having. Um, and then this works just sort of as you'd expect it to, but I'm gonna talk a lot more about this um, closer to the end of the video and why we actually need to have an image tag in here. Um, but the other thing, and again, if you're used to the audio or video tags, is you do need to have some sources. Uh, so it's just source like that. Source is a self-closing tag. So if you wanted to, you could put the self-closing on there. Um, but there is no close source. So it's a little bit like an image in that case. Um, so what I want to do at the beginning here with my source is just bring in the three different versions. Now, one thing you can't do is you can't have a source on your source. You need to have a source set. Even if you're going to have only one image coming in here, so you only want one version of it to begin with, you need to have a source set, the source, and then a source will not work. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy this here and paste that in. And then I'm gonna take this exact same thing two more times. 
Just fix the tabbing on that. Um, except this one here, I'm going to use my medium. And on this one here, my small. Now, at the beginning, I'm not going to even um, hit save. We're not going to look at what this is going to look like. Now, by itself, this isn't actually going to do anything. Uh, there's one thing that's missing. Um, so what we need to do is put it in our media. So, uh, and actually before I do that one thing I forgot to mention, I'm, I'm just going to come up to my styles, uh, my CSS here. Um, I want to look at this really quickly. What I've done is I've put in a, a media query here for 960. So when I make this bigger, it's going to jump to two columns and then jump back. So I'm doing that with my media query here. Um, and the reason I'm doing it with grid is just because it's easy to use um, the grid gap on there to create the spacing um, instead of using Flexbox. Uh, and gap is eventually going to come to Flexbox, but we're not there yet. Um, so what I want to look at now is, other thing is here, the other thing I would encourage people to do, because I do get questions on this sometimes, is on the image itself. Uh, so all my images, I'm just going to give them a max width of 100%, because if not, we're going to run into our images being too big for our page at one point. Um, so max width 100%, and if you want to be careful, we can also throw a height of auto on there. So let's save that. We shouldn't see any changes right now. Okay, so going back to here, we have our source set, and what we want to do is add in, uh, we want to tell it when to use which image, and we do that with media queries, and once again, this might seem a little weird. Our media query is going in our markup here. Just like when we're using our source set, uh, the, we had a sizes that we can use with our source set on our image tag itself. We can also put in a media here, and it's putting the media query inside of our markup. And you might say, this is weird. I'd rather have media queries only in my CSS. It's important to have it here because the browser is evaluating all of this information. It's rendering all of this before the CSS is loaded. So it's looking at all of this. It's getting the size of the image. It's getting all the information on the image before the CSS is loaded. If you're waiting till after, it's too late. So it has to be in the markup here. So what I'm going to do is, um, it doesn't have to be on its own line. So I'm just going to put this on its own line because it's going to make it a lot easier to read. And I'm going to do in media equals, and I put my media query in here. So I can just do a min width of, I'm breaking from one column to two column at 960. So I'm going to keep that media query in there just like that. Oops, there we go. Um, so I have my media. Uh, so this source is going to work at a minimum width of 960. This one here is going to be media is equal to, let's give this one a min width of 600 pixels. I always do that backwards. There we go. Um, and I'm not going to bother putting one on the small because it's, you know, we don't need, that's the default. Um, and even we could. Yeah, let's leave it like that for now. And let's hit save on there. And you can see it actually changed my image. Uh, so now we're going to go through and let's go and look at all of them. So we have this image here and that's working at my big screens. And then it should, when I get to a certain point, it's going to click. And now it's going to this layout. So it's hitting this media query. So it's not using this one anymore. We've now jumped to the medium image. So the cat is no longer centered. And then when we get small enough, below 600 pixels, it should snap again, and we get the nice little kitty cat there. And it's centered that way, and that should look better on phones. Now you might be going, well, it's not actually taking up the whole space. And you're right, it isn't. Um, and this is partially because my media queries aren't optimized for the images and sizes I'm using. And a little bit more work in there could help. But we can also, I want to take advantage to show you that we can be using, just like when we looked at the source set, um, we're using a source set in here already. So that means I can actually come in through here and give it a bit more information. So um, I already have the sizes of all these images down, but this one is a, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy uh, my large image here. Uh, this is gonna make it for one really big image you're gonna see, but let's, uh, and again, sometimes these tab over, depending on your text editor automatically, you don't need to tab it over. You could have all this in one big line. It just makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, so I have an at 2x version of my image, and I have my at 3x version of my image. Now, these aren't things I'm making up. Um, if, if we go and take a look in my images, uh, we already have, these are all images that I've already saved. So the at 2x is just the file name itself. Uh, it's not something, some trick that you can do uh, to make it just render bigger. And I'm going to give all of these a size. And if you don't know quite what I'm doing now, I'd recommend going to check out my uh, video on source set, which would probably make this all make a little bit more sense. 68 width. And these are just the numbers I already know they uh, already got their width. So I'm just 
copying those down. Um, and I'm going to speed things up now and do uh, the same for my medium and small here. All right, so there we go. I've saved, it's been updated over here. And now what we can do is we can check this out again. So as my screen gets bigger, you can see it's using uh, my image here and it's the nice big cat and it's getting nice and big. And then as I shrink down, we're gonna see it's gonna click on over and it's switched over to the other image. And now it's gonna switch on over again and be the other one we want for the smaller screen sizes. And it's working nice and well. Uh, you might notice when you're doing this, sometimes when you switch, it's actually gonna show one of the other pictures and then it's gonna switch um, afterwards. Now normally people aren't resizing their browsers like we devs do. So it should just be loading in the image that you want. And I did have, when I did my source set uh, video, somebody left a comment asking, doesn't this download all of these images? And no, this doesn't download all the images. If you wanna check what's actually going on, you can go to your inspect and your dev tools and uh, you can go over to your network. And in the network, I'm gonna hit refresh on here and it's gonna show me all the different things that are being loaded in here. And I'll be able to find my image that is being loaded in. Uh, so here I can get my uh, image. Uh, da, 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 it's kind of small, let's make this a little bigger so I can actually go in, it's gonna, be changing around. Um, so my image set and the file itself, uh, and the file itself is right here, and it was the medium at 2x. And now if I refresh again, because I've changed the size of my screen, and we find the same, where's my image, my image, oops, that's the favicon, style sheet, whoop, image set, sorry, there we go. Uh, my image, now if I go and look, it's my large at 3x. Um, and, whoops. Um, so you just have to, you know, as you resize, you can do that. I can hit refresh, da, da, da. It goes through the whole business of doing that. And then I can go and check. And this time I got probably the, oh, it's still large at 3x, but it's going to show you which image it's actually downloading. It's not going to download all three of your images. It's only going to download the, the image that fits the circumstances that it needs the best. Um, another thing you can do is I've, I did bring in the WebP version of my image as well. So with this and using your source set, you can also bring in your WebP. So I've only done one for the large version just for demo purposes. Uh, so here when I'm bringing in my large, I could also have my images slash all business large uh, at 3x.webp and that's going to be the same O to W. Um, so I can give it the alternative in my source set here of saying, well, you should use this one, but of course, if it doesn't understand that, it's going to go and choose my JPEG instead. So uh, I'm in Firefox now, actually. So let's go and do what we were just looking at. Before I, I do that, I noticed here I made a little typo. So um, we'll save that and let's bring up Chrome here. Uh, so in Chrome, we can see my cat is there and we'll do a nice little inspect on this. And once again, I'm going to jump over to my little network tab. Uh, network and uh, let's hit refresh so we can see everything that's going to get loaded in on here and there's my image and you can see there as I hover over on it it's the large at 3x WP so it's using my WP instead of using the JPEG because it uh, knows how you know it can support WP so it's settling on that one now one thing you'll notice in both of these when I'm doing it I'm looking at the network and I'm not looking at it over here in the inspector uh, and the reason that I'm doing that is because if you come and look at the picture element, it's going to show you that all of the picture stuff that we were just looking at. Um, and if I click over here on the image, it's actually showing me all the large here dot JPEG, which is what I have right here. So if I actually switch this over to small and hit save, uh, once this refreshes, it's still showing the small here, and this is clearly not the small image. So when you're using your inspector, you can't actually tell exactly which image is being served up, which can be a little bit annoying uh, that you can't see which image is being served up if you really need to know for some reason. Uh, so you can find it in the network. And the reason um, that that can be annoying is um, it's not actually, like this is a little bit inaccurate when it's showing it to you like that. Um, it's only serving up one image. Um, but what it's actually doing is it's using this source to replace this source. So this is a little strange, but really important that when using the picture tag with sources, you'd think it's the picture element, which is loading the image. And this is wrong. The sources in the picture element are giving the image itself, this image here, the one I'm, I'm highlighting. So the image element is the one 
that it's getting loaded in on. And this is really important distinction because it means any CSS you wanna do has to be on your image and not on your picture. And this is, this is a really important distinction to make because let's say I come on the image itself here and I give this a class. So class is equal to, I don't know, just for fun, I'm gonna do 50%. And even though it's not this specific image, it's one of these sources over here. Uh, let's just call it e example for now. Um, so even though this is on the image here and this isn't on one of the sources, and it, you know in reality it's this one I think that's being loaded right now. Um, if I come on to here and I say dot example, let's just give this a width of 50% for fun. You can see that this shrunk down. Uh, so even though it's my image that's getting that class on it, that the whole thing here is shrinking down. And the other thing that's going to be weird at that is maybe on here I do a class equals just for fun example on this because I don't know why I'm doing it on both but now it's actually at 25% because my picture element is shrinking to 50 and then my image is inside of that and it's shrinking again and it's hitting my 25%. So it's important that you put it on the image itself and the reason I'm also going to advocate for putting it on the image itself is because this is the fallback. The order of things here is really really important so it's actually gonna start by starting here and it's gonna go, am I meeting this? Is it min width 960? Nope, it's not min width 960, I'm gonna skip this. If this if this is true, then it's gonna choose one of these images like we saw it does with the source set in that video. If this is false, then it's gonna to jump to the next one. Is this true? Yes, okay, I'm gonna pick whichever one of these three is best suited for the current size of my screen and resolution. Nope, this one is false, okay, I'm gonna fall down to this. If this doesn't work either, or if the browser doesn't know what any of these are, it's going to choose this one. So it's a fallback as well. So if you put your class here, it's gonna work for all of these and it's gonna work on the fallback itself. If you put your class up on the picture tag and it's falling back because you're on Internet Explorer, somebody visiting is on an older browser um, that doesn't support the picture element, and then this doesn't load, it's gonna skip all of this and it's only gonna look at this. So if your class is up here, it's gonna not pay attention to it because it's just it doesn't know what picture is so it can't do anything with picture or it risks that happening anyway. So putting it here is the nice safe fallback, it's going to work no matter what because the, these sources are actually sort of replacing what we see here which is kind of strange, I know, but it's also why if you put all of these, and I said at the beginning, it's really important you have an image. If we have a picture with a bunch of sources, but no image tag, there's no image. <laughs> so uh, it's really important you can't just have sources. The sources are the source for your image itself when these work. So it's no image tag means no image. So it's really, really important that this is here. And because of that, you might as well put any classes or IDs or whatever you wanna put on the image itself and not necessarily on the picture element. Um, so anyway, there we go. With all of that done now, let's save this so we're back to normal. Um, so with all that done, you can see that the nice thing with all of this is that we can do a bit of art direction. We can have it change from one picture to another picture to the next picture and it's gonna jump between the three of them depending on the needs that we need and all of that. So you can do a little bit of art direction with the choices. Now, an important point is source set. So what I'm doing here is doing most of the heavy lifting. It's the big deal here and the picture element is useful just when you wanna bring in different images for layout purposes. So most of the time you're not actually changing your layout, your image might jump from here and go up to the side, but that doesn't mean your image is changing as much of, as what I'm doing in this specific example. A lot of the time, source set is enough on its own. Picture element is really for when you want to bring some extra art directions, you want to load in different images, and then you can also take advantage of the source set power uh, when you're doing all of that. And one thing I forgot to do here is you can, just like we saw last time, uh, I can bring in a sizes and in this case it would be 50 VW just by itself like that because when I'm at the large screen sizes uh, like this my image is always 50% so we can use all of the source set stuff that we already learned about but then we can also bring in multiple different images based on a media query as well. So there's the picture element it's nice it's cool it's fun but you might be going that's a lot of code <laughs> and you're right uh, it's it is a lot of code um, and normally we won't want to be writing that much code so there are ways of automating all of this 
Um, the source set's a little bit easier on its own to automate. So in the next video that I do on uh, my pictures on the web series, I'm gonna be looking at how we can automate all of this. Uh, I'm not gonna be going through all of the different available things, but we are gonna be sort of exploring and scratching the surface on um, automating things to be optimizing our images as much as we can on our websites. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Do you like the new setup? Um, there's a little card that's going to pop up with a little poll on it and leave a comment down below as well. Uh, I'd like to know what you think of this instead of the green screen. I think it's better, but I'd love to know what uh, you think of it as well. Um, just, yeah, there were some issues with the green screen, I think. Um, so yeah, let me know about that. Thanks again for watching. I think I said that already, but I'm saying it again because I really appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks for voting or letting me know what you think of the new setup. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing and supporting everything I do here. So I really, really appreciate that. Appreciate that, not appreciate that. And yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.